Hi, John. Now it's uh, 7.31. Let's call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll wait a couple more minutes for Mark and uh, Marissa, the applicants. They're in the waiting room, so. All right. Well, let the, we'll start the meeting now. Right. And so you could let them in, Jeff. Hi, everybody. Um, we, we're starting the meeting now. And the first item on the agenda is 17 Parsonage Street. Um, and we are um, opening the public hearing. It was originally scheduled for the last meeting, but the applicants weren't ready. So we announced at that meeting that uh, the hearing would be postponed until tonight. Um, and an announcement appeared in the newspaper ahead of the previous meeting. And um, I have received the postmarked certified mail receipts and the um, affidavit of sign posting from the applicants. And I've inspected them. They're all in order. Um, and let me start by saying that a since this application concerns an area variance for residents, a one family residence, it's a type two action under CRA by definition. So no environmental review is required. So let's start the public hearing. Um, Marissa and Mark, um, would you like to give us a presentation of what you're proposing? Looks like you're muted. There Can you hear me? Can you yes. hear me? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, yes. Uh, can we share our screen? Yes. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay, Mark, so you want to take over here? Um, everybody can see this. So basically, I think we took a few pictures as uh, requested from the workshop, uh, the front, uh, the current uh, front southeast. And then um, this is uh, what it looks like uh, as of yesterday, really. Um, and this is the current front northeast. The proposed uh, is, is more elaborate, I guess, uh, in the package that we sent uh, earlier, but uh, this is just kind of just a rendering of uh, the addition that would be, uh, that is proposed. The neighborhood uh, aerial from Google uh, map is uh, shown here. Uh, I'm gonna just breeze through it, I guess, and then if you guys have question or can come back or Oh, it you looks guys. Like, uh, Mark, it looks like the arrow is on the wrong house there. Just uh, yeah, but the addresses are wrong. Uh, this wow. is really 17 here. Yeah, all these numbers are wrong. Okay. Yeah, so that's why it's a little bit misleading. This is the the adjacent northeast house. This is uh, the 17 house, and this is uh, the adjacent southeast house and the corner of Pine Street house here. So one house, two house, our house, and then the other neighbor here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a little clearer. Maybe I can blow, blow it up a little bit maybe. Uh, so then uh, I think uh, one of you guys, or maybe uh, some of you guys uh, mentioned that you wanted to have a little, uh, rationale of why we couldn't expand in the back. Obviously the, the, on the sides, it, I think it goes without saying because it's so tight uh, on each side. In the back is uh, because there's structural and living space there that uh, would uh, have us demolish a bunch of uh, things. Um, and also, I guess we would just, we wanted to put a few pictures of, uh, of um, the neighboring houses to a, to show all, all the proximity uh, to the sidewalk or the street, uh, their homes were in relationship to what we're proposing. So this is the one on the corner of Pine, Pine Street. It's a 
two house down. And then uh, this one is uh, on the left here is the immediate neighbor to the northeast. The one on the right, 37 Pine Street, is just across the street from the, the first one shown. Other neighboring homes uh, on Pine Street that are like uh, with comparable or lesser setback. And on the right here is uh, right across our street, the, the house is there with the comparable setback. And this, uh, I think it was to, uh, one of you mentioned that uh, it would be good to explain where the water runoffs would eventually be. Obviously, this is a rendering uh, just to show that because it's sloping quite heavily to the southeast and uh, so close, uh, the house would be close enough that we could divert to the, the street. And then, of course, many options available with French drains and like even like some landscaping with rocks or whatnot. But for sure, the house to the north is not involved because of the sloping to the south and would be just the house to the south that could potentially be, but we obviously would be addressed with the construction plans to make sure that no water runoffs would end, end up in the neighbor's yard, obviously. So I think this is completing the slides that we had uh, to show what we are intending to do. Uh, if you guys have any questions or, or concern or Let's just, um, as a first step, um, let's clarify exactly what variances are concerned here. Um, could you call up on your screen your um, site plan? Yes, I could actually. Number P, page P3 in your submission. Believe. Can you guys see this? Yes, that's great. So. Let me try to zoom in a little bit. So to the north is uh, the proposed is four feet, seven inches to the uh, the outside of that retaining wall, which would, would be the, the neighboring house to the northeast, which is a parking lot there. As you could see on the pictures, there's several cars parked there, um, you know, at most times, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, so the addition would be basically where a car is always parked there most of the time. Um, and to the south is our driveway, which, and then again, the, the variance, uh, this one is like at 11 feet, one and a half inches. It's actually less than the existing at nine feet, one and a half inches. And then to the front, I think it might be the one that's uh, closer. So it's five feet, four inches from the front structure to the sidewalk uh, here. All right, so um, it means that um, on the north side, um, the, the zoning code calls for a 10 foot setback on the, mm -hmm. in the side yard and you are proposing four feet, seven inches. So that's one variance. And then the other one is on the front where the code mandates a 25 foot uh, setback. And you will have now, actually, I, I believe we're supposed to measure two, I, uh, this um, in porch, this, in, this uh, porch with a roof uh, that you're adding on the front, um, we have to measure to that mm -hmm. because that's considered part of the structure under the definition in the code. Okay. So um, now I see you have two feet, four inches there measuring to the sidewalk. Yes. But, yeah. but but it's actually, we'll, we, we measure the setback to the property line. Um, and I think apparently um, it, it looks like there's about one foot, one inch between the sidewalk and the property line. Judging, judging from those measurements below, you have mm -hmm. five foot, four inch below, and then you have below that, if you could scroll down a little um, or there, that's good. And then four foot, three inch to the property line. Those two measurements indicate if we subtract one from the other, it looks like we get one foot, one inch mm -hmm. okay. from the sidewalk to the property line. So if we apply that above to the two feet, four inches, then is it correct to conclude that your um, porch, the front edge of your porch will be one foot, one inch from the property line? 
I think so, based on what you you mm -hmm. described, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is the, um, that's the second variance that we're dealing with. Uh, um, it's rather than 25 feet, it's one foot, one inch to the front uh, lot line. Now, um, we got a, um, one comment from the public and uh, one of the points that was raised in that comment was whether, was the fact that on your sheet, um, in, your, in your application, uh, the sheet that lists the various dimensions, you did not fill in um, total lot coverage by all buildings. And um, so I just added up what is shown here on your, um, on your site plan. Could you zoom out a little bit so we can sure. see the, the whole property? Okay, so we've got, um, if you scroll over so we can see the garage, um, okay, so I, I added up uh, the garage, 382 square feet, and then the back patio covered, which is considered part of lot coverage. Uh, that is, uh, let's see here, that's 116, existing house, 643. The front addition is 213, and then the front porch. Now, that's not marked but um, as far as square footage, but it's three feet, it extends three feet out. It looks like it might, might be around nine, nine feet wide, maybe, approximately. Uh, you know yeah. Uh, I think the house would be, it's 20. So yeah, maybe six, seven feet, because the 20 feet, three inches is the width of the addition. So you think it's maybe like one third, maybe. Yeah, maybe I think eight, eight nine feet. That That's about right, I think. Uh, well, even if we assume that it's nine feet and so we get 27 square feet there, um, the total for all of these, all of this building coverage is 1,381 square feet. And that is 28.6% uh, of the total lot size. So, um, so you do qualify. You you uh, conform to the um, to the to the requirement as far as that goes. Um, it, no variance is needed as far as uh, lot coverage. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> oh, and I, I should have mentioned at the beginning of the meeting. Um, we normally have five board members. Two of them had to be absent tonight. That's Laura Bosey and Marianne Remy. But we do have a quorum with our three remaining members, uh, John Martin, Heath Sallett, and myself. Uh, do other board members have any comments at this point? And then we will see if any members of the public want to speak. John, you're muted. Yeah, I, I think that we should make sure that the improvements are all totaled up uh, so that it's made for future reference. Um, you know, assuming if uh, this application is approved that we figure out what the total square footage is and, and there should be a submission to go back on, um, you know, with regards to the garage, the patio, front addition, including a porch. Is regarding lot coverage? Yeah. For all that work that you just put in there, I think it should be made part of the record in, in some kind of written form. Okay. That's 28%, right? Well, I think you, you should make sure you get the right measurements because uh, it should be submitted. Yeah. We, okay, sure. Okay. All right. Well, what we could do is um, the one thing we don't have, we have in writing on this, on this plan here, we have the square footage of every building, uh, every structure except the, the front porch, the front okay. um, uh, entry. Uh, and there we have the depth. We have three feet. Um, 
So the one thing we're lacking is an accurate measurement of the width of that porch. The other, there are, there are three other measurements and they're all written here. There's um, written on the plan. The, um, the front addition is 213, the existing structure 243, and then the garage, um, which was um, uh, 382. So we could, um, so it seems to me that um, we have the numbers in front of us with, with one exception and that's the width of the porch. Um, so we could potentially reach a decision conditional on submission of, of that. You see that probably right now, actually me. I'm comfortable with that, you know, reaching a conclusion with that condition, Eric, just for, um, to make sure I'm, I'm looking at the exact comment from the member of the public with the question that was brought up with the total coverage. Was that from the uh, community member at uh, 20, 24 Parrot? Yes, that's the one okay. comment we, we got. Okay, thank you. And um, uh, since we've, we've been talking about which variances are at issue, I'll, I'll address another comment of hers. Um, she questioned why lot width is not part of the requested variance. Um, it, the, the width of the lot is 35 feet, which is of course less than the, um, the code's minimum. It's a pre-existing non-conformity. Um, however, uh, I, I believe that's not a concern um, since, as, uh, since the code permits non-conforming buildings to be enlarged as long as no non-conform, the degree of, of any non-conformity is not increased. So um, th th this particular non-conformity, the lot width is not being increased in any way by this proposed change. So I, I don't think that the lot width is a concern. It's not a, a, a one of the necessary variances here. Eric, go. Uh what about, uh, is there a narrow lot uh, issue here with regards to a different type of uh, side yard setback? Um, I... There is, yeah, there is that um, provision in the code, the narrow lot, lot provision. Um, I thought that just applied to new structures. Um, do you remember where, what chapter that's in, John? I think it's uh, 17134-17. I, I could look it up. In fact, let me go get my code. I'll, I'll let you carry on with things. Let me grab the code and find it. Okay. Yeah, John, I, I found it. Okay. You were right. It is dash 17 E, uh, existing, yeah. existing non-conforming lots in residence districts. Um, for a lot that was under separate ownership from all adjoining lots on the effective date of this chapter, and which has a total lot, lit, lot width less than prescribed herein, and which is proposed for use as a one family residence. Now that's the key language that I, I believe means that we're dealing here with a, an empty lot um, that um, is proposed for, a, for construction. Um, I, I, would, I would agree with that. And, and, and which is proposed for use as a one family residence. If such lot is less than 60 feet wide, then the minimum side yard shall be reduced to seven and a half feet, provided that the two side yards shall total at least four inches for each foot of lot width. Width, lot width. And I think that's, uh, like I said, I believe that clause refers to a new, a new construction and that, that's why we brought it out regarding the other the other project on Parsonage recently, the old barn, because uh, that was a new uh, a new construction. Uh, a new yeah uh, for proposed uh, single family residence as opposed to a shed that was currently yeah. existing there. Uh, the other question I have is 
very quickly. Uh, I, I noticed that you know you do have photographs of other houses along the block uh, that indicate the close proximity of the front wall of the, the residences to the sidewalk. But are most of those buildings or uh, residences are they mostly uh, sort of um, you know patios or uh, maybe? Um, I want to really? share the other one. The, they, they seem to be uh, at one story or and under. I'm just trying to think of the visual impact of what would be uh, a two-story structure brought that close to the street. Uh, uh, you know, addition, I should say. So this is two-story here on Pine, the 33 and 35. Then you've got the immediate adjacent home to the north which is a two-story as well but this is a porch you are correct though that porch is one story the other one on pine across is uh this one here which is the porch is right on the sidewalk um this one as well is two-story on the corner is like closer than very comparable to what we would propose, um, right? So the, those are the pictures of uh, close houses. Yes. So while it's important you point it out because you know we're going to look at what the community character is and how other buildings are situated on the street. I mean that is important. Uh, the ones you're pointing to uh, presently, they they long predated the code, so there was no code telling them what to do at the time when they put their houses where they did. Uh, but again, I mean, it, we're just looking at the overall community layout of the residences in, in your neighborhood to find out if what you're proposing will fit the character. So that's, I, in essence, I believe that's what we're evaluating here at this moment. So I was just trying to think of what one of the things that zoning code deals with is it, it, it looks at bulk, you know, what the bulk of structures you want to put on a property and what that impact is to your neighbors and, and, and how it sort of sits in the overall immediate community area. So zoning looks at bulk and, you know, I mean, there's the other thing of use, which is not at issue here, um, but this happens to deal with variances and you know, positioning of an addition and what that impact might be on a visual bulk level to uh, to your neighbors. And um, that's what we're trying to evaluate here, just to. Sure. Do Eric and, and John, should we make a motion to open it to the public at this time? Yes, yeah, so I was just about to propose um, that okay. we let the public, see if there are any members of the public um, Jeff, can you can you put everybody back on screen? Or um, Mark, can you um, close your screen? Um, take the stop sharing. There we go. Yeah. Um, so, um, are there any members of the public who would like to address? Yes, Char Charlie, please start by telling us your name and where you live. Oh, thank you. My name is Charlotte Brooks, and I live across the street and one house up from Mark and Marissa. Um, and you know, what's the street address? Sorry. 20, oh, of course, 20 Parsonage. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wholly support what it is that they're thinking about doing with the house. They took something that was an absolute eyesore, and I think that they've done some, you know, construction to this property that's not only sensitive, I think, to the historical character of the street, um, but it's also something that's going to raise property values as well. So, you know, I think that the, the plans that they have are consistent with those two goals, and I wholly support it. All right. Uh, thank, thank you. you Charlie. <laughs> um, is there anyone else who would like, to, anyone else from the public who would like to speak? Hi, uh, Aaron Wolf. Um, go ahead, Aaron. Um, hi, Aaron Wolf, uh, 24 Parsonage. I live across the street and down one house, I think. And um, I, uh, I support the project. I think it raises a, uh, an interesting 
opportunity for the block if a, if a variance is granted um, to build right up against the property line that maybe something will finally get done with the barn two houses further down from from the property in question which is right on the uh, on the property line the most I'm sure we all remember the barn so um, I support it and uh, it sounds uh, sounds like a good project thank you thank you thank you all right um, so there's uh, no one else here so um, we the uh, we received one comment um, in writing that opposed the project from Carolyn Bakken and I will I'll read uh, through that um, uh, let's see here My name is Carolyn Bakken. I've resided at 24 Parrott Street for 36 years. I served on the Historic District Review Board for 10 years until February 2020, uh, due in part to that service and to my work experience in architecture and planning. I am familiar with the procedures and standards of zoning boards of appeals. The following are my comments on the application for proposed alterations at the above reference property. I do not support approval of the application and I urge the ZBA to reject it for the following reasons. The application has several errors and questionable assertions. Number one, um, the, um, there's, uh, it requests a variance for side lot setback and front yard, front lot setback. Since the lot is only 35 feet wide and already non-complying, should this not also include a variance for lot width? since the granting of the two variances would increase the property's non-compliance overall. Well, we, I just discussed that, so, um, and I'm speaking now for me, myself, I'm not reading from the letter. Um, so yeah, we just covered that, and I believe um, that um, there is no need to introduce lot width into this consideration. Uh, and now carrying on with the letter, point number two, um, the application asserts that, quote, many houses on the street are closer than five feet from the front property line, end quote. Uh, this is false. The only property within 200 feet on either side of 17 Parsonage is the property directly next door at 15 Parsonage, which has a one-story enclosed porch that clearly predates Cold Springs zoning provisions. Number three, the attached survey dates from 2002 and shows the footprint of the house before the 2017 alteration addition. It should be confirmed whether the main structure maximum percentages on the zoning conformance worksheet for lot coverage were based on the original footprint of the house or were they based using the total footprint after the 2017 addition. The accessory building lot coverage on the zoning conformance worksheet was not filled out. All right, I'll stop reading from the letter so we can deal with that point. Uh, that's a good point. Um, but uh, Mark, could you put the, um, the site plan back up on the screen? If you, if you go up, uh, well, if you go back to your application, the PDF, the multi-page uh, application, The multi-page application. Well, um, this one? yes, and uh, no. The the one you submitted originally. Oh. To the, it has the 2002 survey on it. Or if you can just show us that survey. Which one was that? Uh, zoning appendix documents. Should proposal here. Oh, environmental assessment. Well, it's that's part of it. Yes, it, it's. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, Let's see here. Well, how about if I have it here? How about if I share my screen? Is it this one here? Hold um, on. This one, right? I'd have to pull up my. This one? We're just seeing a blank screen right now. 
Yeah, that looks good. Oh. Do you see it now? Yes. Now, if you just scroll down um, to, to a later page. Please let me know when to stop. Hmm? Yeah, it's when you get to the 2002 uh, survey. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, it's not there. there. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Will, um, Hmm. Um, since I have to quit Zoom in order to share the screen, um, I haven't done this before. Why would it be which one? Um, I thought I had everything. This is the survey um, that is prepared for John Jessick, dated 2000. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, I think I've scanned it. Oh. Uh, you see. Five, six, six, five. Uh, you see here. Oh, where would be this one? It's in with the building plan. Yeah, unfortunately, I omitted well, to. Uh, We can all, we all have this, actually, we all have this document. And um, <laughs> the point I was going to make about it is that we don't, um, it seems to be obsolete. Um, it, it does not include your 2017 edition, just as, as the commenter noted. So the, the survey is not, um, is not relevant or, or up to date for, so it doesn't really, it's not useful for this application. However, we do have your site plan, which we were just looking at before, uh, and which replaces the, the survey. It serves the same purpose. It has all the dimensions, and it has the new, could you put that back up, Mark, the site plan, sure. page P3? <laughs> okay, so this, um, it seems to me that the commenter is right that the 2002 survey is obsolete, but, but this replaces it. Now, is it correct, Mark and Marissa, that um, your, your, the addition you made in 2017 is, shows on this, this drawing? Is that correct? Yes, it's right here, yeah. yeah. So that back part of the house, that was added? No, 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 this was existing, uh, but we just renovated it. Uh, when we purchased oh. the home in, in in 16, but we renovated through, well, overlapping 16 and 17 uh, for a few months. This, what we did, we just redid the roof. We raised the back portion a little bit uh, for um, the roof a little bit for headroom. And and we were just recited and re did the whole roof, but not, no addition, footprint addition. Okay. Well, what is the, when Carolyn Bakken refers to the 2017 alteration slash addition, uh, is, is she talking about? Um, She's she mistaken. About? She's mistaken. It was, there was no footprint addition. It was just, we raised the roof on the same footprint in the back. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, but then going back to that 2002 survey, um, the house has a different shape there. Um, no, it should be the same footprint. Oh, okay, maybe so. Yeah, Eric, the uh, south side of the building is flush against the uh, driveway. Yeah, the that's bump, right. The bump out is on the north side, on the, on the old 2002 survey. Yeah, okay. 
Right. And there's the concrete patio. Okay. All right. So the 2002 survey actually is, does show a complete outline. Of the footprint. Yeah. All right. So, but, so, so we, we in this uh, site plan, we have a, an accurate and complete drawing. Um, so I'll, I'll continue reading from, from her letter. Um, point number four, the short form EAF, uh, environmental assessment form states that the application requires no other government approval, but in fact, the referral sent by the building department includes both historic district review board and ZBA. The lot is within the local historic district. As far as I can tell, these proposed alterations have not come before the HDRB even in workshop. I, I assume that point is correct. Um, and, and that's not a problem. Um, you, you will, if you receive approval from the ZBA, you will have to then proceed to the HDRB. Um, so there is, there is another approval um, required from another body. Number five, short EAF makes the assertion that the proposed action is, quote, consistent with predominant character, unquote, of the surrounding area, which I find very questionable. Um, that's something that the, the ZBA will discuss. Finally, I want to be on record that I voted in favor of the 2016-17 alterations addition to this property by the current owner, and I feel that they made a wonderful improvement to the street in doing so. Generally, it has been my observation that most home enlargements are planned toward the rear yards, probably because A, in the lower part of the village, there's either insufficient or very little, if any, area toward the street side, and B, in other less dense parts of the village, expanding toward the street would involve variances and damage the streetscape. It appears there could be an alternative to be explored. Um, one last note, oh, then she talks about the, the um, manner of mailing, which um, was corrected. So, um, so that's the, um, the objection we received. Um, and some of those points have been addressed. Can you um, tell us in a little more detail why, uh, well, first of all, so the, the purpose, I mean, at the core of what the ZBA thinks about when it evaluates an application is to weigh the benefit to the applicant against any potential harm to the public, to the community. So can you, um, Define for us what the benefit that you're seeking through this project. What is the goal, the purpose? Well, the the first thing is, you know, the house itself is is quite it's quite small. Um, right now, it's twelve. I think it's twelve fifty. And you know, should we expand our family or are we? you know, eventually sell the property and, you know, just making it more appealing to families. I think, especially these days with more people working from home to be able to have an additional bedroom in, in the home is very valuable or even as a play space. So I think overall, it's just whether it's, you know, our benefit or, or someone in the future, I just think it's more appealing to families, which I think just, you know, can only increase the the value and you know parsonage is a very family friendly street just because of the wide streets and we have you know fairly nice sized backyards um so that you know that is you know a big part of our intention um, behind doing it and and we feel that what we're proposing is you know, it's respectful of the feel of the neighborhood, like after, you know, living here for quite a few years and just observing, like some houses do come closer to the sidewalk. We don't feel like we're doing anything that is disruptive um, to either of our neighbors or their views or just to the overall street. So, you know, I think just adding that, that square footage is important. Plus we don't have a proper entryway when you walk in the front door, it's like you're, you're just in the house and you know, just thinking about where we live and being able to have a little, a little like vestibule is, is, you know, adds a lot of value and is important. And we don't have that right now or a covered porch, um, which isn't really ideal. You know, you think about getting things delivered and such. So we just feel that, um, 
it's it's kind of a, a in some ways a, a necessary would, addition i would add, like to add to our we're all, our parents are getting older i'm from canada and my pa my parents are in montreal uh, when you come visit marissa works from home uh in her office we just have two bedrooms upstairs, our bedroom and the other bedroom is the guest bedroom slash everything in our, our office so expending in the front personally for us would be a great great benefit she would have a dedicated office our parents could spend more time with us her parents are in north carolina my parents are in, in montreal so we're we're away from our family so that would that would help a lot to for their, their stay and and obviously uh, you know spending time with us thank you um could you um change your screen to show us the photographs for, of the back of the house what to share oh you know what i closed it oh. Oh, it's right here. Oh, I need to share it. Can you guys see this? Yes. yes. Yeah, so this is the, the back of the house. Uh, this is coming from the driveway. And you've got this, I guess we were told 100 years old plus wall there that we preserved and we expanded the patio and we have a, a covered living area there with uh, well uh, dining area plus a, a another kind of fire pit area for I guess yeah um, so um, to to put your addition on the back instead of the front uh, would entail, uh, what would it entail if you, um, if you were to put it on the, on the back? Well, it would have to, we would have to destroy the, the, that wall there, the concrete there, cause we would have to dig, you know, probably f below fr f frost. I, I, I doubt that this is completely below uh, the 42 inch required for foundation. I don't know that for sure, but I would suspect that it is not. Um, then, of course, destroying the, 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 the all the hard work <laughs> last year uh, under a screeching sun <laughs> during the COVID stay at home. So uh, a lot of shoveling involved by myself there. And, you know, we're just loving that space. As you can see, I mean, we're just, uh, it's a nice outdoor living space. But there's also two the the kitchen is in the back of, of the house. Right, that's so. true. Yeah, when we renovated three years ago, uh, of course, we don't plan that far ahead. And we had that kitchen with the windows there looking to the back and every all the kitchen is there, all the cabinets uh, on that wall there. Uh, so it would be quite disrupting to us, obviously, uh, to uh, destroy all that. And it just, I mean, and it's a few years old. It just seems ridiculous to tear down something that was just built like three three years ago. It just feels, I don't know. I, you know, I just, yeah. I feel strongly about that. That um, anyway, that's all I have to say about it. Okay. Um, could you scroll to the photograph of the front of the house, the, the, the two photographs? Yeah, so, okay, e either one of those. I guess that's a good one there. Um, so for me, it, it, to my own thinking, that the issue boils down to 
Um, I mean, the, the, the benefit that is being sought is clear. Um, it's a tangible benefit. Um, the, um, the question then is weighing that against the, uh, the change to the streetscape. Uh, this, I, I, I see the, the only effect of this addition as being uh, to the, 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 the main effect being a change in the streetscape. I took a walk down uh, Parsonage, Parrot, Pine, around the whole block. And um, although it's true that there are some houses right up against the property line in front, most are not. Uh, there is a, a modest front yard. Most, most of the lots have modest front yards. And there is a kind of spacious semi-suburban feel on those streets that is very typical um, and quite different from uh, what we get down in the lower village, the, the older part, the um, um, and Main Street and so on. So there's a definite shift in character when you come up into this neighborhood, a more spacious the street just has a more spacious open feel. And this, um, this addition will fight against that. And um, it will be, a, a, although it's not unprecedented, it, it will be a, a minority, part of a minority um, style in, in this neighborhood. Um, so I, you know, I, I can see, I can see the, the reasons, um, I can see arguments against it on that ground, um, just as I can see arguments in favor, uh, I just as a, I can see the need to enlarge a small house, a tiny house, any thoughts from other board members? Yeah, I, I absolutely understand and appreciate what you're what you're saying, Eric, with regards to the the adjoining streets and that part of the village, um, and certainly you know the setbacks comparatively, but also aesthetically the pluses um, with the addition. Um, I I made note early on when you I, I thank you for mentioning that we weren't discussing any kind of environmental impact. Um, I, it's not though a heavy street with the, the sight lines um, aren't that of trees necessarily on that street. It's, it's more of what's in the, it, it's the architecture of the homes. And again, I, I'm sharing this and not speaking as a professional um, just from my own point of view, but it's also the, the um, the distance and the sight lines and the, the views and obviously the incline when it comes to the street. So I appreciate both, you know, I, I share this in appreciating both comments. Um, the one that you shared, well, something I've said has triggered Siri, so I apologize. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, I, I, I'll conclude with, I appreciate the comments of, you know, what is typical in this part of uh, the community, but also aesthetically how it, you know, and, and as members of the public that have shared in, in, in the neighborhood on your street, that this is advantageous too. So uh, yeah, John, any, any comments from you? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, how, how, how deep is the uh, backyard beyond the sitting area? How, how much further back does it go? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I can pull up the other. I mean, I can see it's the back of the garage, basically the back of the property line, I imagine. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because like, you know, if we're waffling around the fence, I, I wouldn't mind having an opportunity just to go down and just get it. I mean, I've heard your neighbors, uh, you know, more positive than negative, uh, uh, but probably should have taken a moment except for I was so busy uh, with other matters, uh, state parks, volunteer work. Uh, but I would, you know, if it came right down to it, I might want to get a, a look at the, uh, the community. Uh, the environment, the, 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 all the setting of the houses. I, I think the, the plan, 
the structure and the proposal, it looks very attractive. Uh, so from that end, I think it would be an advantage. It's just, uh, you know, I'm just curious about what the bulk impact might be. Uh, and again, the new addition that comes out, how, how much uh, apart from the porch itself, but what, what is the length uh, from the old uh, front, of the current front structure of the building? It would be 10 feet. Uh, 10 more feet coming forward, right? Yes, 10, 10 by 20. Uh, In breadth. Yeah. Actually, so what's the site plan again? Let me just, yeah, let me pull, pull yeah. it up. Yeah, so it would be 10 and six inches by 20 and three inches. Okay. You know, I, I always saw that it would be wise if the board ever got together and they took a look at the properties. Obviously we do that individually. If we were to get together as a board, we'd have to give notice that we were doing that. So that's why we have to do it independently. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to take it all in, absorbing it just through the photographs right now and my recollection of what that part of the neighborhood is like, uh, especially since we dealt with a structure that was only like two or three uh, property lines away from you uh, near closer to Pine Street. Um, but you are on the west side of, the, of Parsonage, right? Yes. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, in my in the back of my mind, I can envision. I have to. I would have to just sort of drive by there. I, I but well, what I found when I walked uh, walked the street, um, the current setback of, of the existing structure is pretty typical. Uh, there's a, a small front yard in front of most of the properties. Um, this drawing shows a setback of 14 feet, nine inches. Um, and that's pretty typical. Um, there is a, there's just a, a, a feeling of ease and, and spaciousness um, to this neighborhood. Um, and the current house expresses that. Um, so it's just a question of how important it is to preserve that, how, how much lot, what would be lost if if this house were to move forward. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this in many ways. Uh, of course, while I mentioned before that there is a second story here, uh, whereas the, the property that's closest to you on 15 has really a one story uh, porch, enclosed porch. But at the same time, your proposed structure does have a slanted, you know, sharply slanted roof. So it's not a huge, you know, second floor bulk appearance uh and you have uh, the cape windows coming out um i'm just trying to fully appreciate the the, the appearance of it so uh, again it, it, it's better that it's not a big you know block coming out matching the current front of your house uh i think there's a lot that's favorable in that regard but go ahead eric you were about to say I was going to say you raised a good point about the um, uh, um, of the uh, other properties in the neighborhood that encroach on the on the front property line. Most of them are one story, covered porches, enclosed porches. Um, few of them are two story two story facades right right within a few feet of the front property line. That's unusual. It, they they exist, but it is unusual. Um, Yeah, they, they have photographs here of, of, of most of them. That one on the right there is, is one, one of the most notable that is right up against the, the property line. Yeah, of course, that's the, uh, the oldest building on the street. <laughs> this is the barn here that you were referring to, I think, right that's here. Right. That's yeah. right. So it's two houses down here, it's right on the that's sidewalk. Right. I, I, I know I know most layouts just visually I I didn't I don't really look closely at each given house it's just how the houses sort of sit on the block and uh, I was just trying to make sure that I had a, a good in, uh, idea of what it's going to in fact look like by going by the area but uh, it, it's up to the board 
if, uh, and, and the applicant. Uh, the other thing I would say, Eric, is this. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if the applicant's been informed that, you know, for, for the size of the board we have tonight, you have to have a 3-0 in favor vote. That's the point. And, and if there were five members sitting to hearing everything and it wouldn't take that long to, if we were to revisit uh, this uh, two weeks from now, just saying, if it were three, the board, two of the board members could go against you. And if three were in favor, the project would go forward. I just want to let you know that, right? You're familiar with that? Mm -mm. Us, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's just, Eric, go ahead. Yeah, John is, um, I think John is uh, introducing the question of whether it's better to decide, um, to reach a verdict tonight or to adjourn the hearing and continue it in two weeks. Um, and the reason, um, I mean, uh, one of the advantages to you, the applicants, is that it's easier to get a majority vote on a five member board that it is on a three member board or, or rather for a three member board, you have to have a unanimous vote in favor in order to, to pass. For a five member board, you only need three votes in favor in order to pass. So- Can we um, know the vote prior or then we can go tonight <laughs> if we have three? <laughs> um, okay. Well, I'm on the fence. I, I, I wouldn't know what to tell you because I'm- <laughs> If, if we look here in, at the photograph on the on the right on the screen here, uh, the house closest closest to us is kind of typical. Um, it's got a modest front yard, and the part that extends forward is is a one story uh, enclosed porch. So that sh shows you a very typical kind of um, semi suburban. Um, and I know suburban is a dirty word, but that's what the fact is about this neighborhood. Um, it's got that, I mean, it was deliberately, most of the houses were deliberately set back, even if the code didn't require it at the time, they were set back a little bit to give a, a kind of a little more kind of sense of space. Uh, and um, I love the look of, of a streetscape that's built right up against the sidewalk. Um, but I, I, it works best when it's harmonized, when there's a harmony there. Um, and so I, I feel like this proposal is fighting against the predominant character of this neighborhood, but maybe not, maybe not to a fatal degree. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe not enough to overturn the applicant's um, need. Can I ask a question, Eric? Um, because I know, you know, fast forward when we get to the, the, the variance test and whether or not something, this can be achieved by another method with that question, being that the applicants pointed out that there's the historical impact with regards to that wall. Is, is that, how do we, you know, can't, how much does that uh, notion or, you know, fact, <laughs> um, you know, weigh into our decision with the variance, or is that something that just the historic, you know, review board can discuss? Um, I, I think it's appropriate for us to take into account all aspects um, of, uh -huh. of the, um, of the alternatives, of the proposal itself and of the al al potential alternatives. But um, mm -hmm. so there is, uh, I mean, if, if when, we're th when we're thinking about are there other feasible means to achieve this goal, then it's certainly legitimate to, to, uh, to take note that of the waste that would be involved in demolishing um, perfectly good um, existing structures uh, that, which may have some historic value. But keep in mind, there's, there's a destruction of historic fabric in the proposal because um, mm. there will be the loss of that that the existing um, size of the house, the existing facade in its place where it is. I mean, the, the fact that it's a tiny house is is a historic is a historic um, uh, feature in itself. Right. 
and a very distinctive one that, that no longer you, you no longer see very much in houses. So um, that will be lost under the proposal. Um, we don't normally put too much weight on that because we're not a historic board. Um, we're, it's not the zoning code says nothing about these these matters, so it's not a primary. Okay. Not a primary consideration. Thank you. So Eric, I, you know, like I say, uh, I think that for me, it would be good to, to, to do a walk over uh, to, to look at the uh, area. Um, otherwise I'll just base everything on this. I am somewhat familiar with it, but I, I just haven't envisioned by looking straight at the property and immediate surrounding properties, what the proposal will actually uh, bulk wise look like. Um, and I don't know if two weeks makes a difference. Again, I, I, I can't guarantee that we'll have five people two weeks from now either. Uh, but I just wanted to make mention for, for the applicants uh, on the uh, part that uh, if they were unaware, again, uh, it, it would require a 3-0 vote tonight in their favor. Uh, or if they waited for two weeks, potentially we could have five members on the board and they would only have to convince three. And, and I'm just putting it out there. I, I don't know who would vote and what way anybody will vote. Uh, I'm still weighing it all right now. And, you know, having heard all the evidence. Marissa and Mark, um, what would be the impact on your, your scheduling um, if we were to adjourn for two weeks? It's okay. It's, mm -hmm. If you guys need more time to, to have better, you know, um, a view of the site in person, I, I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah. It's, you, you know, I would rather like you be comfortable with what we're proposing and like, you know, we don't want to, you know, impose obviously a uh, push whatever. And yeah, if you guys want two weeks, yeah, it's, it would be okay. Yeah. Yeah, because this is a, a, a little bit of an un, uh, unusual project in the sense that the bulk is coming that much forward uh, from other things that we have sure. seen. You know, this sure. is not. I mean, this is not immediately in the village on Main Street and everything where we would say, well, everything's on this. Well, not everything, but everything is fairly close to the sidewalk. But, you know, this is a little different. Uh, and I'd like to get a sense of the community. And heck, I would like to resolve it and be all friends with you and just approve this tonight. But that wouldn't be doing our job or my yeah, job. Sure. I understand. Totally understand. Yeah. 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 And, and I think also, if I were the applicant in your shoes, to be honest with you, uh, knowing the way uh, boards work and quorums and everything, you would probably want as many people sitting on the board because you didn't have you wouldn't have to convince them all. It's just as if you were going in front of a jury, if you only had to convince sixty percent of them, you would. Rather no, no, I understand the have degrees of freedom, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So. I mean, I'm just trying to let you know what you, your your alternatives are and how, what sure. the situation is. In general. So, and, and in the end, the decision is yours. And then, you know, what you want to do. And then, you know, if we had to come to a vote, we would just vote however we, you know, each one of us feel. Nobody discusses these projects in advance. Every board member is independent. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Sure, understood. Mm -hmm. Respect that. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, John. Do you want to make a motion that we um, adjourn the public hearing, leave it open, and continue it two weeks from now? Um, yeah, I, I so I so move uh, as to your statement. All right. So John has moved that we um, leave the public hearing open and resume it on May twentieth, two weeks from tonight. And I'm doing it personally for a purpose of going to see uh, and to go through the neighborhood. That's why I'm doing it. And to think about the whole project. And by any means, if you feel like you want to go see the backyard, Marissa is here pretty much all day. She works from home, so I'm sure she. Yeah, feel okay. free. You can yeah. just walk. Yeah. It's fine. I, 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 I know who you are. Do, do we need to second that? Yes. We always okay. need a second. I will I will second that that motion by right. John.
And um, in the meantime, Marissa and Mark, could you submit to us um, uh, in writing, or you could send it to me, the, um, the missing um, piece of information that we talked about earlier. And that is, sure. uh, we need to know that this project qualifies, that it meets the 30%, the requirement, no more than 30% building coverage. Um, so if you could add up the, um, all the structures, the, everything with a roof, so that includes the porches mm -hmm. that, that have roofs and columns. That's because that, in the zoning code, that's defined as, as part of a building, a structure. Mm -hmm. So total lot coverage by buildings and give us the percentage with the, with the addition. Did you mention the patio as well, Eric, by any chance you said? Um, it, any the green? rear, well, not the uncovered patio. Yes, only, no, just only the covered part. The, that is correct. The roof. That, that, I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Yes, everything front and back, everything with a roof over it, front entrance roof, back patio roof, that all is part of the building coverage calculation. And garage as well, of course. Yeah, we'll do. All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you in two weeks. All right. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. Um. The next item um, on the agenda is the resolution, the draft resolution uh, regarding 17 Marion Avenue. This was our decision at the last meeting and it, we need to um, record it in writing. Yeah, so, what day what day do you have that on? What day did you send that to us? Um, sent that on um let's see. So the first day April 14? No. No, it was about 4 days ago. Um, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, no, I looked at it when you sent it, but I'm just like, I'm trying to find it now. Back up. Oh, it the draft. 5-3, May 3rd. May 3rd. Five, okay, done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think those are minutes and that's an agenda. Anything else with 5-3? The, um, the name of the message is draft resolution, the subject. Okay, all right. I have to go to another one on five three. Uh, Eric, did you send it under your name? Yes. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Set. Out of curiosity, do you guys need to me to mute on my end? Can you hear feedback or another no, voice? Right. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, no, okay. No, there's a little no. bit of noise. Okay, it's um, it's actually kind of unique. It's uh, normally doesn't happen at this hour. That is, this will sound strange. It's not my wife. That's my neighbor in my office. <laughs> <laughs> my office like transfer sound so it's like you know eric for probably having heard my wife's voice before it might be kind of odd to hear <laughs> another woman's voice you, at this you, hour I, to public <laughs> I just felt compelled that one ask the question i didn't and two make sure everything's above board here <laughs> well you, you could have said that was coming from my place <laughs> nobody would have known 
Okay, Eric, I was going to ask you real quick. Uh, is there any need in any of this, do you think? Um, I've read it through, but uh, to mention what the impact of what would be a 30 foot long, I know you mentioned that it would be within three and a half feet, but that would actually run a length of 30 feet, you know, uh, the, oh. the post garage. It was, a, it was a square 30 by 30 by 30, right? Um, yeah. Um... That's one of the things that impacted me was what would be the visual if that was built in my neighbor's yard, uh, 3.5 feet from the property line, but ran 30 feet yeah. at, 12, at 12 and a half feet in height. Yeah, that is, um, that's a, that would be a, a cogent, uh, that would be a relevant point. Um, I mean, that, that comes under the heading of um, detriment to the neighboring property. Um, so yeah, um, we could add, this would be um, the, page one, the third whereas from the bottom uh, would create a substantial detriment to the neighboring property at 15 Marion Avenue because. Um, yeah, yeah, it would spend 30 feet in length along the, uh, along the property line at 12 and a half feet in height, it's what I remember. Yeah. Uh, and only three and a half feet from the, the property line itself. So however you want to word that. I mean, it was my that visual impact that I had that I think would have been fairly significant for the neighbor. OK, uh, yeah, I'll put that in 30. I'll check the exact measurements, but 30 feet long and 12 and a half feet high, um, extending far into the side yard that is intended by the code as a buffer zone. Yeah, uh, yeah, right, exactly, at three thereby, and a half feet. And it goes on, thereby diminishing the property, pr the neighbor's privacy and sight lines. Yeah, that, that, that's all, that, that's the thing that really impacted my um, feeling about the whole project. Uh, you know, everything else was really nice about the project. And, um, but, but if you recall, it upslopes uh, going, towards uh, the southerly neighbor, the, 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 plant, the as they explained it to us. So that meant that the roof of the, of the, um, the proposed garage right along 15, uh, the neighbor uh, right. to the north, the roof would have been higher than, you know, if you're visually looking at it from the other direction, from the south mm -hmm. looking north. Right. So yeah. that, that, that's what sort of stood out to me. Yeah, that's definitely worth mentioning. But everything else seems to be fine. Okay. Heath, did you see anything? Go ahead. I, everything, I had to switch rooms, guys, sorry. Um, <laughs> and now there's horns behind me. <laughs> you, you, you got horns. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't see anything that, that needed corrected. <laughs> so thanks for putting that together, uh, Eric. You're welcome. I know you, there's a lot of work that goes into all this. Boy, do I, I, I can only imagine. Yeah, I almost was gonna volunteer, Eric, to read the the public letter and interrupt you midway through after you had started. Um, but then I wasn't sure if you were gonna go through the entire item. And then I realized at the very end, I wanted to know whether or not you were going to read the last two words in the letter. And I thought that might be fascinating to hear you say, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> you, you'll have to forever wonder how I would say those words. <laughs> Especially if you were wearing those horns that are behind heat. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Okay, Heath, Thank do you want to make a motion to approve? Uh, I move to approve. I, I, go ahead. I second. You. Okay, right. there we go. John's made the motion. Heath has has um, seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, unanimous. All right. So last, um, the last item is the minutes for the meeting of April 15, which Jeff has kindly completed. Um, and sent us. Um, do you have John? Do you have those were sent? Yeah, on... I have. I, I have those up okay. here. Yeah, I I knocked off that resolution by accident. I have several pages up here. 
uh, that's why I was having a hunt for it again. Okay, well, let's take a, mo a moment to review the, review the draft minutes. Well, I don't have anything as to the first page, but I have some thoughts as to the second page. But I'll wait till everybody's done. Okay, I, I um, do just know. one item in the the opening, just the correction of my last name without yes. the uh, the H in yeah, sale. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, my apologies. Oh no worries. <laughs> you think uh, with a name like Vidakovich, I would make an effort to. <laughs> Make sure everybody's name was correct. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, Jeff, did you uh, hit the derby? Not even close. <laughs> you, do you want to know something? I had that. I, I was telling everybody about that horse since December because of his breeding. Roberto, everything. But I, I don't want to waste Eric's time. I'll talk to you another time about <laughs> this. Jeff. But the, the payouts on the exact, it were like fifteen hundred and seventy bucks for two two dollars. Yeah, it was, it was astronomical. That and the triple. <laughs> Yeah, for the future pools. I'm talking about even oh. future pools. Yeah. So anyway, it was I was laughing. My father was down in Virginia and my sister was calling me up. All your all dad's yelling is said, that's the horse that John said to pick <laughs> in January. <laughs> anyway, as to the as to the minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, yeah, let's um, Marianne's name needs to be added at, at the top. Um that's as right. list of members present. Marianne Remy, so I'll add that. And um, and then under opening comments, um, where it says that um, in, to allow the applicant to send out notices to neighbor by a certified mail, um, I didn't actually state that during the meeting. I just didn't get into that. I just said okay. they weren't ready. So I think it'd be best just to put it the way I did in the meeting, say, because the applicants needed more time to prepare for the hearing, no need to, I think there's no need to get into the um, nitty gritty of that. Um, so John, what did you see on page two? Well, actually, I, I, it was page three, so I'm not going to say anything until we get to that point. At this, okay. point, unless anybody has anything as we go through up until we get to three, page three. Um, top of page two, it said um, he noted that four written comments had been received. There were more than four, I believe, um, but I, so I would suggest changing to just several. Um, and then um, under um, the five criteria, um, this was before Jeff uh, was taking the minutes, but we, a, a while back, we decided that um, not to include all the, um, all the discussion up, up, about the four factors, like everybody's different opinions because it's just um, it's confusing because it, it doesn't have to be in the minutes and it, it 
it kind of conflicts with the resolution. The re resolution is the canonical record of the board's um, thinking about the four factors. So it's confusing to put a kind of um, summary into the minutes. It's so difficult to summarize accurately. Okay. I think we could have we could have told Jeff that in advance and he would have done <laughs> an hour earlier. <laughs> so that, that yeah, so but, Jeff, I, what we right. decided a, a while back is just to say something like um, the board next um, you know discussed um, how the five factors applied to the application, and then so and so made a motion to approve, and, and just not say anything about not get into what people said about each factor. All right. Because that will go into the, the official form of that goes into the resolution then. Okay. So what we're gonna do with these minutes, so we'll just do it exactly what you just said, Eric, and basically extract away uh, the, uh, these points that have been made in there, correct? Yeah, I was thinking it, it should read, the board discussed how the five factors applied to the application. Eworth made a motion to deny the variance. J. Martin seconded the motion, et cetera. Now Jeff is going to definitely want to keep the job. <laughs> Makes it a lot Makes it easier. that much easier. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a, a, absolutely, <laughs> Jeff. And below that, the next item, um, um, it, it's not wrong the way it is. Um, the, the point about the new correspondence, um, I, I guess, did I, I don't know if I meant, did I refer to the village attorney in the meeting itself? I, I just feel like that's uh, overly, being overly. Yeah, I was, I was rereading that a couple of times and I was trying I, to figure that out. <laughs> I think I just said it was received um, after the public hearing was closed and it's therefore not a timely communication. and. Yeah. So I, I, I would suggest we make this just something like commented that the board had received new correspondence about 34 Kemble, but since the correspondence was submitted after the close of the public hearing, it could not be taken into account. You're right, okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. John, did you see something else on this page? No, I, I was going to talk about uh, the factors. That's what I was yeah. going to get, but I, that, that's it. So yeah. I, I agree with what you said. That's what we agreed to in the past. I'd rather make jo Jeff's job easier. The resolution says everything. So, and rather than being consistent, you know, we should just, just re reference to the uh, okay. resolution. Okay. Um, so uh, I'll make a motion. I'll move to approve the minutes as amended pursuant to our discussion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, anyone else? Anyone have anything else? Any other business? No. And again, thank you, Eric, for everything you do, putting this together. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Hey, uh, now, last thing before we depart, uh, should we give uh, Ms. Remy and Laura a heads up or to... Oh yeah, about the decision tonight or the yeah, uh, yeah, they could possibly be there next week if they can. I I, sure. I made I made the applicants aware that you know I couldn't guarantee they were going to get five people, but I will I, um, tell them about the adjournment and tell them that um, uh, one of the reasons is that um, or one of the um, one of the um, kind of implications is that if the, if more board members are present, the applicant has a more fair chance at winning approval. Yeah, where, where projects are a little bit diff, uh, difficult or a little bit on the fence, you know, or whatever, there's there's a lot going on in this one. There's It's not as straightforward as some of the other ones. And, uh, um, and I think, you know, first of all, I'm going to go by and look at the property. And I imagine other people, well, I think you should might have say to Laura and um, you know Miss Remy to do so as well uh, just it, yeah. it would just help them give a better understanding the last thing I was going to ask of Jeff is there a video replay of this uh, that they could go over that or is that 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, tomorrow I'll have it posted on the Village's YouTube channel. Okay. You can okay. go and watch it. So what do you think of that, Eric? Uh, that should be, it's, it's out there for the general public. They might as well, if they're going to be there next time to be able to. Uh... That's a great idea. I'll, I'll give them the link to the video. I encourage them to watch it so they can be up to speed and encourage them to walk by the site. And now the last thing I was going to say, did we we never closed the public hearing, right? Correct. We we had adjourn. a to adjourn it and leave it open. That's right. So they can ask any questions they need to ask. So that's the important thing. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Just clarifying all this. Thanks. Okay. No, that that helps me because I was going to ask you know, due to the the couple of members, for example, Charlie and Aaron, that spoke on behalf of the applicant. You know, it does give that feel, and if you're not there as a board member um, to hear that, so it's it's essentially in any situation moving forward, it's just the board member's responsibility to ensure that they viewed that portion of the meeting in order to get a flavor. Right. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, thank I'll you. move to close the hearing, and thank you, Heath. Thanks for that. I second. I second the motion. All in favor. Bye. 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 All right. Unanimous. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Heath. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.